I'm Dr. Zach Lofman. I'm the Zoo Science and Applied Conservation Coordinator here at West Liberty University. I'm also the co-graduate program director in biology. And unfortunately, we all find ourselves stuck at home uh, in quarantine, and many of you intended on coming to campus. So what we thought we would do is bring the campus to you. So what I'm gonna do today is show you several of our zoo science spaces and introduce you to our animal collection here at West Liberty. So the first space we'd like to show you, and this is our snake lab. So all of these enclosures that you see in this particular laboratory are industry standard. So they're basically the exact same type of enclosures you would find in a zoo herpetology department. Here at West Liberty, the bulk of our collection is reptile and amphibian based. We refer to those animals as herps. And this is one of our pythons. This is actually our female olive python and they're from Australia. This is going to be one of our largest snakes in that she's only a youngster and you can see she's a pretty big uh, animal. When you come to West Liberty, you have to work with the animals. It's a requirement and you're gonna take a class called Bio 181 and we're gonna teach you many facts about these creatures. Once you pass certain tests, you're then free to work with the animals and you have to work with the animals. Everybody has to put in 50 hours of contact per semester until they hit 200 hours before we'll let you go off to a bigger batter zoo for an internship. In this particular lab, these are snakes we use for research. And one of the things that we do a lot of here at West Liberty is we investigate animal welfare. So we're trying to figure out how to keep these wonderful animals in human care to the absolute best of our ability and to their ability in that we want them to stay happy and healthy. This is another one of our snakes in the snake lab. This is our female spotted python and I'm holding her hide box but right now uh, if you take a look, she is what we call inverted. Uh, she's laying on her side and that's because she's about ready to lay a clutch of eggs. Uh, we have several species of snake that we breed and you get to learn the process of breeding snakes. We don't breed these animals to have cute little babies. We breed these animals to advance their husbandry and so that we have young snakes to ultimately do some science with. And that's one of the things we're really big about here. It's in the name, Zoo Science. Uh, we're all about doing science with the animals that we have. So in this incubator, we have um, several false water cobra eggs. False water cobras are not actual cobras. Uh, they're a type of snake called a colubrid. And these eggs will hatch. And when you come in the fall, you'll actually be seeing them as babies, uh, which is kind of exciting. Um, at present, we have over 50 eggs incubating. And the baby snakes that are gonna hatch from these eggs are all gonna be used in several research projects that we have in the fall. Our graduate students and our undergraduate students will be working on those. So, they're eggs now, they'll be babies when you get here. So with the zoo science major, we always say zoo science, but the actual technical term for the entire major is zoo science and applied conservation. So those of you who want to do field-based research, you absolutely can do that in this particular major. And my background is actually more based in the field than in zoos. I'm a field-based conservation biologist and I study crayfishes. And if you take a look at this room, all of these aquariums that you see are holding a federally listed species of crayfish. We work with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, hand in hand in the preservation of these animals. And these particular animals, everybody in here is an example of that collaboration. These animals were actually living underneath a bridge and that bridge was a railroad bridge. And there was a problem and the problem was the railroad bridge needed to be rebuilt. Well, you can't build a railroad bridge if you've got a whole bunch of threatened species living underneath it. So we worked in collaboration with a consulting company as well as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and a railroad company and basically went down into the field in southern West Virginia. We collected the crayfishes that were gonna be harmed and we brought them back here to West Liberty. We built this facility to hold them and they're gonna be living here while the bridge is being constructed. Once that bridge construction's done, we're actually gonna be taking all of these animals back to the wild once we've screened them for diseases and we're gonna introduce them back to where they lived. Uh, they're doing great here, they're molting, they're growing. And if this is something you're interested in, aquatic species, field-based conservation, West Liberty is absolutely the place 
for you. While we've had these crayfish, we've actually had quite a few births. And what's been kind of fun is several of the females that we brought in from the field were pregnant, basically. They were holding on to these little things called spermatophores. And resultant of that, we went from housing about 60 crayfish to close to 700 crayfish in this room. And we actually have quite a few babies that we're rearing. So the fun part about this is we'll be re releasing more crayfish to the wild than we actually started out with. And that makes all of us feel pretty good in what we're doing. Space is room 305 and room 305 is one of our general animal holding spaces so there's kind of a little bit of everything in this particular space and that being said there's still some areas of emphasis so this part of the room is dedicated to turtles and tortoises this is one of our red foot tortoises and as you can see he's not exactly a gigantic tortoise but he's not small either and we have two of these both of these animals were formerly at the Roanoke Zoo in Virginia and they needed to find a new home and the Roanoke Zoo felt that we were a good place for them to go and we inherited them. So uh, right now it's actually a little bit cold outside but over the past couple uh, weeks when we've had warm periods these guys get to go out on the quad and they pretty much have the whole quad to themselves because we're in the middle of a quarantine. So some other animals that we have in room 305 include several different species of lizards. So this particular stack of enclosures uh, houses our leopard geckos and then our blue tongue skinks. So here's one of our blue tongue skinks out and about doing what they do. Uh, they're not really active this time of day. They're just kind of chilling because as you can see, they've had all the food they're gonna get for the day and they're nice and, and happy. Um, other lizards we have include over here and you can see Steve is right here pointing his little head out. Um, this is one of our monitor lizards and I'm about to show you another monitor. We love monitor lizards here at West Liberty because they're incredibly interactive. Uh, they're very inquisitive and as far as lizards are concerned, yes Steve, he's doing his deal, uh, they're just smart. And um, we've done quite a bit of behavioral research with them and maybe you'll get to do some research with them when you ultimately come to West Liberty. Uh, other animals we have, several species of snake. Um, most of our snakes are doing what snakes do this time of day, which is basically hiding out. But as you can see, big on animal welfare here. Um, this entire enclosure is dedicated to a single animal. So we do our absolute best to make sure our animals have the most space and as much interactive um, structures in their enclosures as possible. The other group of animals that we have in this particular space are our mammals. We actually don't have a lot of mammals currently, but over the next uh, several generations of ZooSci students, one of the groups of animals we intend on increasing in our animal collection here at West Lib are different species of mammals. So we currently share a sloth, um, Sweet Pea, she's actually the animal that's in our logo, with the Ogilvy Good Zoo, our partner zoo. And then these three enclosures house our Tenerex. And Tenerex are a group of mammals that look like hedgehogs, but are actually not hedgehogs. Hedgehogs are in their own group. These little guys, and you can see, I'm gonna get him out, but he knows what's about to happen. Uh, these animals come from the island of Madagascar off the east coast of uh, Africa. When you come into 305, there's a very distinct smell that hits you, and that smell is the smell of our Tenerex, because like many mammal species, they emit an odor that they use for marking their territories uh, with. So it kind of smells like fermenting popcorn in here all the time. These animals came from the Cincinnati Zoo, and Dr. Barber, one of our zoo science faculty, and our graduate students in the zoo sci major are actually working on a handbook of care specific to this particular species of Tenric that's gonna be used by AZA institutions across the country. So we do a lot of work with zoos. Uh, it's kind of why we do what we do. And hopefully when you come, you get to do that work too. So this next space we're gonna be looking at is our gecko lab. Uh, and like I said, we have quite a few reptiles and amphibians, and if you like geckos, this is the place for you. So this particular batch of enclosures uh, house our day geckos. These are Madagascar giant day geckos. But all the other geckos in this particular space are from the island of New Caledonia. Uh, in this, the field of herpetoculture, they're referred to as racks because the genus name for most of them is Rachodactylus. And one of those that has this name 
are this particular group of, of uh, geckos we house. All of these enclosures house giant geckos, Rachodactylus lychianus, because their species name is lychianus, they're also referred to as lychees. And we have raised most of these animals from the time they were hatchlings, and this is one of those particular individuals. So, as you can see, once I plop her out here, yeah, she's not very happy about that. But these are not tiny geckos. So, one of the fun projects that our students get to do is looking at the behavior of how these particular group, uh, animals interact with each other. Most reptiles are not monogamous, which means that they don't form a pair bond for the entirety of their lives, but Rachodactylus lychianus does do that. And so we have several males and females, and one of the science questions we've tried to determine is how do they choose a mate and what drives that decision-making process? So if you look at this bank of enclosures, several of them have these little threads and one thing you'll learn when you become a scientist is that anytime you walk into a group of enclosures and there's random little stickers or threads or stars, that means something special is going on. And in this particular case, these are the animals that we thought were going to form pair bonds. And we actually were successful in getting a pair bond to form with this particular group. And we're waiting to see if we're going to get eggs and little baby Lichianus. Of enclosures houses our crested geckos and gargoyle geckos. Uh, we have several crested geckos here and you very well may have a crested gecko uh, as well. These particular uh, animals all came from stock where we know the ancestry and one of the goals we have is to teach you how to run something like that's referred to as a stud book. Stud books are how zoos and aquariums keep track of who's related to who and ultimately make the decision as to who breeds with who. And this is real important when you're doing uh, captive breeding with endangered species because you want to absolutely make sure you're producing the broadest gene pool. We don't have rhinoceroses here at West Liberty to do that, so we uh, expose you to that with our geckos. And one of our goals in the next couple years is to start that initiative with with you. So your class would be the class that would be starting that. We also have done independent research projects with crested geckos and that's what this bank of enclosures was for initially. And right now one of our current seniors in the zoo science major, Michaela Schaefer, myself, and uh, the first cohort of graduate students, we all have a paper that we submitted to the journal Zoo Biology looking at how these animals interact with each other and create dominance hierarchies. Nobody knew that they did that and then we ultimately based off of our observations here at West Liberty, we're able to determine that they do do that, and in particular, females do that. So that's just one example of the kind of science that you'll be doing and the actual opportunities you'll have. Michaela actually went all the way to New Mexico with me to present her research at a scientific meeting, and we offer you those opportunities as well, should you come here and do research, which we encourage all of you to do. that lives here in 301, which is the main zoo science room, that's what we refer to it as, is this big guy. This is Norbert. Uh, Norbert's one of the few animals that's enjoying all of the social distancing that we're doing because since there aren't that many students on campus, as in next to none, uh, we're able to let Norbert out of his enclosure more often than we normally would. So he basically doesn't have the run of this room by himself ever, but if we're in here and we're doing things, uh, we just kind of let him out and he can investigate the room as necessary. Norbert's considered one of our advanced animals, and all of the animals here at West Liberty have a category associated with them. And I mentioned before that you have to take a class called Bio 181. In that class, that's when we teach you about the husbandry of every single animal in our animal collection. And you have to be able to pass a test with all of them before you're actually able to take care of them. Uh, so with Norbs, though, everybody wants to take care of uh, him. He's a giant. Uh, Asian water monitor. He comes in at about seven feet and weighs just over 45 pounds. That being said, he is a large animal and we are not cavalier with him. We make sure that only experienced people are able to be in the room with Norbert uh, under these conditions. So Norbert's enclosure is right here and in the fall of this year Norbert's actually getting a very a much larger enclosure and we'll be moving another animal into this space. So as you can see, we try to give them as much room as possible, and yeah, everybody loves Norbert. So 
this is another one of our animals. This is our Egyptian tortoise, uh, Dilbert. And as you can see, this is Dilbert's enclosure. One of the jobs you'll have is taking care of Dilbert. Um, if you look in the windowsill here, an important quality of all zoo personnel that take care of animals is also understanding plants. And we're actually getting ready to plant several different seeds into these bins which we use to create tortoise gardens. And basically we grow up the food and then we're able to plop those down in with Dilbert and Dilbert's able to get some fresh vegetation. Uh, over the summer, Dilbert will be heading outside quite a bit and he is also able to actually eat vegetation off the quad, which he does quite readily. Uh, other enclosures that we have in this particular space include our Tehu, who's hanging out up here on top of her light in our windowsill. This is an Argentine black and white Tegu. Uh, she has reached adult size. She doesn't get any bigger than this. And uh, one fun aspect about this enclosure is this background that you see, this was all created by zoo science students. So what we propose you do with our major is actually get dirty. We want you to be doing stuff that you learn about in lecture. And I teach the zoo herpetology class and students that take that class have to do a project. And so one of them wanted to make Mort's enclosure better for her. And as you can see, they did an absolutely phenomenal job. So in this particular enclosure in room 301, our zoo science room, we have the largest snakes in our animal collection. The snake that's moving around up here is a Brettles python. Uh, that's a python that's native to the center part of Australia. And in the tub we have another species of python. This is what we call a coastal carpet python. So this is another one of the spaces that we're quite proud of because this entire enclosure was designed and constructed by zoo science students. Uh, there's a lot going on here and one of the things you'll learn about when you come to West Liberty as a zoo science major is enclosure design. It's something we're really big about. And this isn't just a bunch of sticks and rocks. Uh, if you look down here on the side of this rock, there's a little black panel. It doesn't look like much, but that's a heat panel. So this corner is actually designed to give the snakes the heat that they need. Many people think that snakes need a lot of heat all the time, and the reality of that is they don't. So we have a lot of vertical space in this particular enclosure, which as you can see the Brettles python here is using. This enables our animals to pretty much get to whatever temperature they want to get. This is part of the design associated with zoos that many people don't realize is going on and it's actually at the heart of zoo science. And if you decide to come here as a zoo science major, which we encourage all of you to do, you'll be learning this and you'll never be able to look at a zoo enclosure the same way after you've had the classes here at West Liberty. So this is our commissary and all zoos and aquariums have commissaries and kitchens where diets are prepared. And here at West Liberty, we took an old chemistry room and converted it into our main zoo science room. Uh, and as you can see, it looks just like the kitchens would look in other zoological institutions. So as a zoo science major, you spend quite a bit of time in here preparing diets and pretty much this whole space is dedicated to that. So this particular refrigerator and freezer houses all the food that needs to be refrigerated for our animals. Um, we have another freezer that actually houses quite a few frozen rodents for all of the reptiles. Uh, we have two dedicated uh, tabletops where you're going to be preparing diets. And this is where math comes into play because a lot of our animals have to have a specific proportion of a certain food in their diet per day. So one of the things you'll be doing is you'll be learning how to use things like scales and balances and we have quite a few of those. Another thing that we teach you here is an awful lot of animal nutrition because we don't just feed our animals an uh, food randomly. They have to eat very specific uh, food that has specific vitamins and minerals and things of that nature. So as you can see, we have several different you know, supplements here uh, that we put into the diets and so on and so forth. Many of our reptiles in particular, as well as our mammals, actually eat insects. So this particular series of bins and houses quite a few of our insect colonies and we have everything here from various types of beetle larvae things like superworms and mealworms we always have crickets and then we actually maintain colonies of cockroaches uh, because our reptiles love cockroaches so we have two different types we've got a type of roach called dubia and then we have another type of roach which you may have seen uh, prior to today uh, they're madagascar hissing cockroaches so when you come here you're 
taking care of animals out there in their enclosures, and then you're also taking care of the food stuff that ultimately some of our animals eat. So it's all about animal husbandry, and if that's what you're into, West Liberty University is a place for you. So please consider us strongly, and if you have any questions or comments, you have my email, so reach out. I'm more than happy to give you a phone call if you'd like to talk in person, uh, but at the very least, you'll be hearing from me. So I hope to hear from you. That's your tour of the zoo science spaces here at West Liberty University.